let's practice exploration of UFI firmware hierarchical structures. In this practice, we would like to use UFI tool and optionally UFI extract. Uh, both tools have the same purpose, but first one using uh, graphical user interface and second one using command line. Uh, normally, we would uh, start with downloading executable, uh, but just to save time and network bandwidth, we have already UFI tool and UFI extract uh, in our course virtual machine. Uh, just for reference, we include installation instruction in the course materials. Uh, so let's start with running UFI tool in, in terminal. Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, UFI tool um, got regular uh, main menu, a file, actions, view, help, will overview what's what's inside of those uh, during this exercise. In addition to that, uh, we have a couple other windows we, which can deliver some information when we will open UFI image. So there is a structure window which is uh, which would be uh, most used by us, um, and we will see how it look like when we load some uh, firmware image. And then there, is a, there are information, when we click on the components, we will see what's going on. And there are some status windows related to various parsed structures on the bottom. So let's start with uh, loading uh, sample image. We should it, uh, have it in EDK2, build OVMF x, x64, debug GCC, um, firmware volume and OVMF FD. Uh, so, as you can see, the UFI tool recognized our image as a UFI image, um, type image with subtype uh, UFI. There are various image types which UFI tool can recognize. We will see, we will take a look at, uh, at others to show some features of UFI tool. Okay, so let's look at file menu and what kind of um, options we have here. So we can also open a file in another window. We can generate text report, which will contain um, very detailed information about uh, our image. We can also load um, a GUI database. So this option gives us ability to load some custom database, uh, which contains GUI that we uh, identified in our previous research. So we don't have that file. Here, but maybe in you in your own research will create such file or you will have file because you will work with some firmware developers who can provide you information about the GUIs used in the firmware image that you're exploring. There is also a default GUI database included in UFI tool. It contains around 4,000 uh, GUID identifiers. Those are like um, well-known GUID identifiers reported by various researchers to the UFI tool projects reported by authors, plus those which are very well known because those exist in open source EDK2. So they added it for, for simplification. We will see how uh, loading default GUIDs uh, help us uh, understand uh, the content of UFI image. We can also unload the database and we can export discovered GUIDs. Uh, what this option does, it just creates a comma separated value file, so it's CSV file, which contain GUID and the text which was associated with given GUID if there was any found in the, uh, in the file. So, um, so first let's look like how, uh, how our loading of um, GUID works. So you can see that uh, the default GUIDs were already loaded because this GUID is already identified like uh, as a EFI system NV data firmware volume GUID. Uh, if we go deeper, we can find also some, some GUIDs were not identified, but here we can find the GUID which was identified as a LZMA custom decompressed GUID, uh, which is related with the compression. So the code use it. And here we see there is more uh, uh, stuff identified related with PEI. When we unload, those those GUIDs. We can see that our NVRAM uh, is not identified, and when we go deeper, like more stuff is is identified. 
just plain GUIDs and we don't know what exactly here inside. Of course, we can learn a little bit uh, using this text, but not all files in the system image will contain that. If we explore uh, this structure window, when we click on various components, we can see that the, on the right side, uh, there are some detailed information uh, associated with the with given components. In this case, this is volume. So it has one type of uh, set of parameters, attributes. Uh, if we go to, let's say, uh, a file, uh, the set of parameters is different. Of course, we will not go into details of what every every of this parameter means. Some are self-explanatory, like checksums or body or header or offsets, uh, but some are um, have more meaning. Um, what is important is that there is action menu, and depending on the type of component that is selected in the structure window, various options are available. So, for example, in this case, we can have hex view of the image um, or, or we can uh, extract it to the, to the file. Then if we choose different component, let's say even section, uh, then we have section highlighted and there are different set of options available for us. And some are even hidden be because of um, uh, not working with the, this type of image or this type of file. Uh, the same thing for the files, and we see the file is highlighted. So um, the same menu is also available as a context menu. So you can see that if I click right click on the component, I have the same actions which are visible here. When we load uh, Intel boot, like when we load image which uh, which is full uh, Intel image with the uh, uh, firmware interf interface uh, table inside, um, we can see even more. So let's. So I have couple images prepared here. So if you will go to the home directory and choose all files, you will find these two two files on the bottom: Z70, uh, Z Z17, and Z77. So let's load the Z17. And you can see that there are some colors uh, appearing here on the, on in our image in our structure window, and there are even um, some data identified and parsed and displayed on the bottom. So let's quickly go through that. So everything here is uh, these colors and those structures which were parsed are related with uh, Intel Bootguard technology. Uh, so Intel Woodguard is a security technology, is a, a root of trust technology, um, which gives ability to fuse public key uh, into processor, which gives ability then to verify uh, firmware uh, images. Uh, the process is way, way more complex, uh, but uh, for now you, you just have to know that it's, it's a security technology helping in verification of the firmware that's booting in our system. What we can see here is that uh, there are three colors identified and of course Intel Bootguard technology depending on the configuration which is partially displayed in firmware interface table uh, showed in this tab pro uh, provides a ranges uh, which protect parts of the uh, firmware image. So in this case uh, the red range is a Intel Bootguard uh, initial boot block uh, protected range so probably that's why it's red, it cannot be modified um, uh, at all. Uh, Cyan co color code show that those are different protection ranges, not related to Intel Bootguard, but maybe related to uh, protection um, uh, set up by the independent BIOS vendor. Um, and the yellow one uh, say that those ranges are uh, just partially protected, so those are not fully protected um, by the Intel Bootguard technology. Okay, so there are also there is also security windows which uh, cover uh, content of uh, Intel Bootguard manifest and and various details related with Intel Bootguard technology. Okay, and that 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 would be it. So we can uh, enable and disable uh, those markings by just uh, using view option Bootguard markings.